Hi, I'm Tyler Wolf. I'm a calibration engineer here at APR. I've been here for about five years, and then in the past year and a half, I became the lead of the Porsche program here at APR. Um, I've been in the drag race for a long time. Had a world record Evo that had the fastest stock turbo Evo back in the day. Um, and then once the GTR got to the point where I was trying to make about 2,000 horsepower with it, we started to do the Porsche program. I had two real big goals for it. One was I wanted to be the premier Porsche tuner that was the best in the world that does this in the aftermarket. And the second was I wanted the customer who bought the car, who drove in, to basically think they went into Porsche, bought the car, and drove it off the lot brand new. So it was like we were never there. All right, so Porsche program started about a year and a half ago with our purchase of our 718 Cayman GTS that we got, which is a four-cylinder, two-and-a-half liter turbo turbocharged Porsche, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was a great transition for us since we haven't been in the Porsche market for a while, but being it's a four-cylinder direct injection turbocharged car made by Porsche, which is in the Volkswagen Audi group, it seemed like a pretty easy transition to come over to what we're normally working with. So the first thing uh, we did was we invested in some MoTeC dashes, built some custom harnesses, and pulled pretty much every hardware component out of the car, studied it, put sensors on it, so we have anything from EGT sensors, pre-cap pressure, pre-turbine pressure, inlet depression, what's your coolant pressure, coolant temperature, when are we saturating the system, turbo speed sensors, you name it. We, we put 35, 40 plus sensors on each car individually to be able to monitor and see how things are going. But the instrumentation is a huge part for maintaining the hardware in a safe operating range for the car over the duration of its life. Um, the next step after doing a whole bunch of dyno work and accumulating data was to go do a bunch of track testing. So, and we did a lot. We've gone a quarter mile drag racing with the 718. We went to a half mile drag strip down in Ocala with it. We went to multiple track days where we've gone to Barber. We went to uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway, we went to VR, we went to Road Atlanta, uh, and basically just put it through its paces in its worst case scenario. I was lucky enough to go on track with uh, Ian Boss when we were at Road Atlanta doing our original uh, testing on the 718, and he put it through hell. Uh, I think we may have pissed off a few GT3 owners that day because we were there on uh, GT3 hours day only, and nobody passed Ian and we passed everybody else. So shout out to Ian for being a badass pro driver and making everybody else look bad, but uh, the car was pretty amazing. Although we may have sold Porsche a few 718s that day to people who thought it was a good daily driver car. Uh, but 718 is just an a, amazing platform, and that was one of the keys to success for Porsche is being able to have a car that drives every day on the road, but yet can still go to the track just like if they were stock, go run all day long, and then drive back home. Um, so that was a huge part of the process and the development of pretty much every Porsche that we do needs to go through that type of torture testing to ensure it will survive the same scenario for a customer who upgrades their car. So I, I talked to a lot of people, I've gone to a lot of track days now, I've done the Porsche experience where I'm actually an instructor for driving now, and what I've really gotten out of it is just how excited people are about the Porsche program and uh, Porsches in general just because of the cars and the culture that comes with it. You don't, I mean you get that a lot in some car cultures, but the focus that these people have and Everything they know about it, uh, it's, it's just amazing. You can't sit there and come out with a half-ass product. It needs to exceed everybody's expectations. Difference is I think we go above and beyond. I think we offer more features than anybody else, which is why I look into things such as auto blip feature for you guys, how many torque outputs we can do, why do the modes need to run differently. Also look into adding a bunch of safety protections that aren't there from the factory. Uh, we add turbo speed protection, we add turbo temperature protection, we add D rates for if you run out of fuel system. The uh, list goes on and on that we add into it because we are pushing these cars harder. They are being worked harder. We are asking more of what's there from the system. So we need to have these extra protections and that the factory didn't need because they had headroom on the table that they didn't have to worry about it. But now that we are asking more of the car and pushing towards its limits, we really need to make sure we know what's going on and we can maintain and hold a constant temperature or EGT or back pressure and know exactly where the car is going to be. So no matter where you go or what you do, the car is always on point. So I think that's one of the biggest things that we have spent the time to do is add into the safety features that are not there from the factory. Um, so that's something I'm very proud of and something I think that will be tremendous help to those who are on track to be consistent, reliable, and repeatable every day. We're not just turning up the boost, but we're finding out how to make the system support the car at its new power levels and be reliable for you. You get that experience of, I just came in, I have my Porsche, I picked it up, and like you drove off the dealer lot brand new with a car, but that just has 100 more horsepower, whatever it is that you picked up with the particular car. <laughs>